Okay, I'm gonna be switching between my R Studio console and um, and the um, and the presentation, and the reason is because I've actually never used uh, STR view and in a, in a in a markdown file, and what I found is that there's some caching or something going on, and anyone who's aware of this, please feel free to share information. But mm -hmm. I was not able to see um, new results as I kept running the different chunks. So for all the coding part, we're going to switch over to the console, and for the more theoretical, you know, it, we, we're going to look at this. And actually, I think it ended up being a blessing in the end because I think we could play around with things and, and learn, and we can learn as we go along. So I, I really enjoy live coding, but I don't have the guts to do that. So I'm, I don't have, I'm not brave enough to do that. But we could. This is as close as it gets for me for to be a live coder. Okay. So anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, the title of my talk is, as you know, regular expressions, and we are essentially using the, the stringer package here. So thanks to our ladies, Cologne, thanks to our ladies, uh, Gabaroni, uh, appreciate it. I know I haven't been the easiest of people to uh, work with, but I appreciate you all's uh, patience. So thank you so much. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump right in. So what are regular expressions? Like we, we've heard of this i mean we've heard this expression before but like what are they it's essentially a pattern that describes a specific set of strings which have a common structure and you apply this across whatever um, string or text um, that you are searching it's used a lot as you can imagine for matching and replacing it's, it's actually used a lot in replacing which i did not know but it's used in a lot of programming languages and it forms the, it, it's basically a canonical tool for a lot of string operations that go on. So having said that, what are the six um, primary characteristics that drive uh, regular expressions? And I, I know this is a lot, this is gonna be a lot to take in because it's so theoretical, but just hear me out and then we'll, we'll get right into each one of these and, and work through some code, okay? So um, just, just to give you like a, a, you know, just a feel for what is happening. So we have the basic pattern matching where you have a, a string that you're trying to search and you have a pattern and it's, it's gonna do an exact match. So like, that's something that we're always used to. You have John Smith and you are trying to find J-O-H or you're trying to find John or something. It, it's, it's a straight search. Like there's not, not much that you can play around with there. And in the stringer packages, a uh, package you have, uh, you know, a bunch of functions that enable you to do that and to view it, to subset it, etc. So pretty straightforward, nothing much going on there. But you can already see that you're starting to get into a little bit more of like you're starting to get more of a feel for things that you can do. You can actually indicate that you want to search at the beginning of a sentence or you want to search at the end of a sentence. So these are the meta characters that you could use. So the the, the power symbol is used for to indicate the start of a sentence and the dollar indicates the end. And this is, it's kind of getting a little bit into how you can customize the way you want to search. And of course, love it or leave it. You can't do without it. The escape characters, um, you know how you have the backslash. And if you're using some special character, which is already there in your string, you have to escape it. But here's the fun, especially in R, and I'm not sure if it's only in R, you actually have to escape your escape character. So this can start to get a little bit hairy because if you're trying to escape your escape character and your regex is also looking for a backslash and you're searching for a backslash, you actually have four backslashes, like one after the other, and you're, the last one is what you're actually trying to find. So escape characters are, let's, I mean, honestly, I, I don't care for that much, but you really can't do without it. So that's, um, you, you will, we'll go through some of those examples as well. So we've covered three already. So this wasn't too painful, the theoretical part. Um, at this point, it starts to get a little bit more intense. Um, there's something called character classes where you can define a range. So you can say that I want all of the lowercase letters. I want all of my uppercase letters. I want digits. Or you can use an escape character with a special uh, letter here, D. So this is um, essentially the same as saying that you um, that you want only those which are, uh, in this case, sorry, it is non-digits, but you have the backslash and lowercase d, which is actually the digits. This little character character indicates that it's not. So that, um, that, that is the special character that you're using here. But the reason it's called a character class is because they are enclosed in these square parentheses or square brackets, and you will create a range by using that. And this becomes important because the square parentheses and the actual parentheses that you see, 
they are really very different in the way they function. And they're both powerful in their own way, but this is something that you need to watch out for when you see a regex. Is it surrounded by square brackets or is it actually these round curved brackets? So just keep that in your mind and we'll go through the examples. So there is no point in going over all these different options. You'll see them as you come across them. Um, but suffice to say that you can create ranges of what you want to search and you can combine them. You can do a combination of letters and numbers. You can have spaces and uh, white spaces, et cetera. Like it, it's, it's a really pretty powerful uh, starting here. And you have something called a quantifier, which tells you how many times you want that thing repeated. So let's say I'm looking for digits from zero to nine and I say that I, um, and I say that, and I put a star after that. That means it matches at least zero times, which means that even if it doesn't match, it's okay, but it can match from zero to any number of times. So you, there is no actual requirement here. Whereas if you say that I have numbers, but I have a plus sign, then you, it has to occur. Like one of those numbers in this has to occur at least once, but it can be one and more. And this is your utmost. So this is your at least, and this would be your utmost. And it tells you the maximum number of times that something can match. And if this gets a little bit confusing, you can actually also do it this way. You can have these flower parentheses and there you actually indicate the number of times that you want something to match. So um, again, don't, don't stress over this. So, and finally we have these character clusters, which really I think are the best you can create so when you do a search it's kind of like um when you if you're if you're familiar with sql and you write a query it's it's like how you have a sub query within a query and then you can you can use the results of your sub query to you know do other things so it's kind of like that if if you're familiar with the you know db fire or uh, sql syntaxes at all so the 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 the, um, the current parentheses will let you create a small subset of whatever matched your pattern and then you can go on and uh, forward to you know do further analysis with that so at this point i'm going to go ahead and switch to our studio because uh, like i said I, and i'll just show you a glimpse of the problem i had um so this was one of the data set, i mean uh, one of the data sets i worked with and it was fine but and i'm using this function called str underscore u the problem is that no matter what my string is, the, the result set is defaulting to the previous one. I, I really do not know why, but uh, suffice to say, we, we'll just work in, the, in, in our studio and you know, I'll, I'll talk to, I'll post a message in, on Twitter or something and figure out what's going on. So anyways, um, any questions so far on any of this theoretical stuff or um, do you guys feel like you wanna just go ahead with the code part of stuff? Like if you have um, anything that was not clear over here. So, okay. I, I think there are that. no questions yet, but I will okay. take care of the chat. So in case something comes up. Okay, okay, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> I that. I will say something. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, you will say something. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay, so, sounds good. Okay, so I'm using uh, our markdown. I'm using the Sharington um, theme. I'm sure everyone knows and loves that, but um, that's just the first part of this. So let's just skip through all of these right now and get let's get right into our data set. So one of the data sets I'm using is something that, um, so Jenny Bryan taught this class a long time in her stack 505, and now it's been taken over by others, but she actually used uh, this data set a lot. And it's, it's a condensed version of all the transcripts of the Enron messages. So let's quickly run this. And uh, let's take a look at what the end on. I, it's, it's a very watered down version of what it really was. It's basically uh, here, it gives you a, a, the details of what the columns are. One is the mail number. So how many mail, uh, the, the ID of the mail, et cetera. And then here you have the person that sent the mail. And this is the actual content of the mail. So what I've done here is I've given you a glimpse of the columns in this, in this data set. I've dropped all the NAs and here I've actually taken a small snapshot of like the first 50 entries. So you can see that you have a mail number and you have a person. And then here you have all the details of uh, email addresses. So like what, who is it from, who is it to, you know, just all the stuff that goes into encoding a message. Um, and so this is, um, well, it's uh, here, here's your text uh, having whatever. So I um, mean, uh, whatever been transpired there. So. This is one of the data sets we'll work with, um, the Enron data set. 
So um, now that we have loaded that, let's just take a quick look at this. We are going to do the very first principle, which was basic pattern matching. So I want to call your attention to um, the column, uh, to one of the, sorry, to the one of the columns here, and that was this person. And you can see that there's this person, Alan hyphen P or whatever, who shows up. And so what we're going to try and do here is that we are just doing a straight string search. We are going to grab the column. We are going to put our string in, and we are doing the str detect, which will give us the, all the places where that matched. So you can see that out of, um, I believe we had, uh, yeah, out of two hundred and fifteen thousand rows, we have about three hundred and three thousand one hundred and seventy six where the person matches. So there's not nothing no guesswork here. Obviously, if you change this to uppercase Allen, it's it is case sensitive, so it would not work. So it's it's definitely a case sensitive system. So you all you're doing is you're providing the column that you want to search, and I think everyone has done this at some point in their lives or not. So um, let's take a look at uh, I mean, and this is just like more examples of the same. So I won't I won't really waste a lot of time there. So let's get into the second part, which was the anchors. And if you recall on the anchors, we saw that we had, um, it basically indicated to you the start and stop of a sentence. So the caret was the start of a sentence and the dollar sign indicated the end of a sentence. So let's say you have a use case where you're specifically trying to see um, something at the beginning of a sentence. Then in that case, you would, you would preface it with this uh, caret and then you would uh, run this. So I'm using again the same data set. And here I'm looking at the email column. So if you recall, we had uh, the email column where actually we have the contents of the email and that also stores the email addresses, correct? So here we are gonna look for all those which came from this at ECT. So it, we have the carrot here and we have the at and then, oops, sorry. Okay, and so let's run that. And what you see here is that in your email column, which is what we are looking at here, it pulls up all of those where you're starting with at ECT. So if I change this to something else, which uh, is not, doesn't match, or if I change the case or whatever, you are not gonna get that. So we have just literally uh, started our first foray into how you can customize your search. We are getting the, at the beginning of the sentence, we are trying to uh, get this, um, we're trying to see if this search string passes. So we see that there are 10, um, 13 rows that actually meet that criteria. So let's take a look at uh, the, um, the end of a sentence. So if you wanna go back and take a look at what that is. Oh, sorry. Um, here, the start of a sentence was the carrot and the end was the dollar. So let's take a look at this. So if we are searching for weekend dollar, and mind you, the dollar and that other uh, starting character, they're both enclosed within the quotes. So that's one thing to remember that it stays within the quotes. If you run this, you get all of your, and this is a fairly large list because I think, um, yeah. So it just takes a minute. So this pulls up all of the emails that had weekend at the end. Um, so I, this is a slightly longer list, so it, it, it just takes a little while. So any questions here so far? This is literally for the start and the stop, and you'll actually end up using it a lot more than you think, uh, but it's it's fairly straightforward. Um, any questions thus far? Because it starts to get a little bit hairy right now. Not yet, but I think one thing that is really great to see here is that if you don't put in the, the carrot or the dollar sign, it just like, whether it matches any of these patterns anywhere in the string. But once you specify, oh, yeah. like with the beginning and the end, I mean, obviously you kind of define where the, the algorithm should look for the things, right? That's correct. So let's take a look at this. This gave you 13 rows. So let's take out that part, the carrot, which indicates the beginning. And the reason I'm choosing this is because the other one is uh, fairly, and this is gonna give you a lot more because what you will get now, um, let's do this though. Let's go ahead and just get the, since we are only looking at email, let's do just email and select. Okay. 
Let's just get that so we can see all of those. So now what you're going to see is that anywhere in that string, if app ECT shows up, it's going to show up, right? So it's not like restricted to the beginning of the sentence like it was. And now obviously you have like a whole lot more uh, number of rows. Like earlier it was 13 rows and now you have 6,524. So obviously like if you're very sure that you're going to find something at the beginning, then you want to use this because it will save you computing time and resources and, but yeah, if you're doing just saying it. So uh, yeah, so that's that's how you can, I guess, cut down on your processing um, juice that you need. Uh, okay, so escape characters, right? So these, um, like I said, they, they are really powerful, but you just kind of have to like figure out how R is actually getting this to work. So um, let's run this. Let me just run this for now and, and let's just see the result and then we talk, talk, talk about what it is that we're actually seeing here. Okay, so we have a character vector here and you can see that we've got different formats. And I know this for people that work with healthcare data and people that um, do a lot of processing with uh, you know, addresses and people's contact information, which me being one of them, um, the format of uh, phone numbers, et cetera, is like a big deal because of the fact that you're, um, you know, you want it to be a certain way. So in this particular case, and I don't know if this is restricted to R, but I know in R, when you are trying to find, so I want to take your attention back to what backslash D stands for. So let's come here and take a look at what backslash D is. Your backslash D represents all the digits from zero to nine. You could either do it this way, or you could use your character class where you have the square parentheses. So you could have done it either way, it's just that it's a lot more readable when it is given this way. Sorry about that thing spinning, not sure why. But um, when you do have numbers like this and you wanna say that you're looking for um, these digits, right? These digits that show up, when you escape it with D, because you're not looking for D as a string, you're looking for it as a meta character here and in the, in the context of regex, you will use it with a backslash. However, when you're using a backslash string in R, you also need to escape the escape character. So that's why you have two backslashes here. So, I mean, just take a moment and, and give it some thought because basically what this is doing is that it is saying that you're taking the number, but you're escaping it so that you're not using D as a string. So, I mean, with R, you guys know all about the, you know, the, what is that? Um, Shoot, what is that thing called? Um, the R line package where you have the substitution of strings and where you have the variable name. I mean, you've seen some of that lazy, um, what is that called? Lazy something, um, lazy evaluation. So it, if you think about that, this will kind of start to fall into place that what you're doing is you're escaping your escape character and you're saying that don't treat it like it's just, um, you know, um, you're not looking for D here, you're looking for, what, the, what it represents, which is in this case is a digit. So what this does is it's gonna look for three occurrences of digits followed by a hyphen here. And then it's gonna look for three occurrences of digits again, right? And it's gonna find that you have, um, but um, you're gonna see that uh, when you do do that, let's do one thing. Let me just take this to my console since it's tripping around. And let's view it here. It's not ideal, but like I said, things always go wrong when you don't want them to. Um, it was it was fine like a moment back. But so what I've done is I have um, I've already assigned the value of my character vector. Yeah. And here I'm saying that I want to search for three numbers followed by a hyphen, three numbers followed by a hyphen. And when and you see that out of all the numbers that you have here. It pinpointed the first one. Why? Because the others have spaces here. So it didn't meet that criteria. This one has two spaces. And this one does not meet the criteria of having three digits uh, followed by three digits. Uh, any questions so far about either the escape character or why some of these didn't, the, ones that's, the one that's highlighted here is the one that fulfilled it. And so uh, any questions here about why this, this, uh, this succeeded and the others didn't? Okay, I will take that as a uh, as fact that you understood this. Okay, so let's take another example here. 
you have a string here and it's the, the content of the string is, this is just the string. So it goes here and I've, I've just provided some, you know, just some special characters here. Now look carefully at what I'm doing here. Um, I have, I've used the dollar, but it's not the dollar that was used for the end of the sentence, correct? Why? Because I've escaped it. So it's different from the dollar that we use to indicate the end of a sentence. Then that's where the escape character here is, it, it's gonna become relevant. So what I have said here is and I've escaped the escape because it's, it's an R and it's a string in R. And I'm saying that, hey, I want you to find me the actual string dollar, right? I'm gonna escape the escape again. And here I have the carrot and I have the dollar here again. So when I run that, it's not going to look for the meta characters here. It's actually going to use the literal string, right? It's going to use the literal string here. And that's why it gets that. So if I did take out that, so let's say hypothetically, I remove, um, I've actually not run this before, so let's see what happens. So you see that it does not bring back anything, right? And that's because you need to tell R that this is a string that you're using, but you're also using regex for it to recognize that. And that's why you're gonna double uh, backslash it like we just did. So I double back, oh, sorry. Backslash, backslash, backslash. Run it, and it can recognize it. So, any questions or doubts so far about the literal string versus what the meta character indicates? That's, it's not a question, a but more a note. I think, like, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not really using string like str view. But I think it's really handy because it like the highlighting part and everything, it makes yeah. things so intuitive. I, I rather use like grapple and grab and these things. Yes. So I'm, I'm yeah. uh, but I love it. Like it's really but great that you're showing it. I'm glad you said that because I was trying to regret using SCR view because I couldn't use a straight R markdown. But I'm I'm the kind of person who really works well with someone actually coding or someone showing me the results and changing it around. Like it just clicks. And I don't know if everyone is like that, but I know for me, it really makes a difference when I see that. So, which is why, but I mean, it really did mess up my R markdown. But yeah, thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. So I hope this is kind of clear because the escape characters really like, I hate them with a passion, but you really can't do without them. So I'm just like kind of really hoping that you guys got that and, and that's, um, that's clear. And we can play around with this if you, if you want. So let's say that I wanna pick this one, okay? Just, just for, for fun, uh, I wanna pick this. So this is not gonna work, why? Because I don't have the opening and closing parentheses. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get this to work. Um, so we don't, have, we don't have that hyphen there. So this would be that and this. Okay, so I think it's gonna work. I think it, it should pick this one. Uh, okay, so because this one is so ridiculous, it's in my console for some strange reason. Okay, uh, and let's try this. So uh, please uh, redirect your attention to this side of the screen, which is a little bit taller than the other. Uh, so it appears it did not work. And uh, let's see why. Uh, so we have the backslash. Um, we have parentheses, we have D, D, N. Probably we have to escape the parentheses, but I'm not sure. The parentheses? I yeah. have not seen that. Is that true that we need to I don't know, that? just just guessing. That's, uh, well, like we are probably gonna have to go down that route now in just a little bit if this doesn't work. So B, B, and B. That's interesting, I wonder why it's not. Oh, you know, oh no, it does. 
Do you have to add the space as well? Is, is there a space though? There is no space here. So, hmm. one, two, three. So we have the opening, we have the closing, we have three numbers that we've escaped three times. Then we have three numbers that we've escaped three times. Then we have the hyphen, one, two, three, four. Well, that's interesting because that did not work. Uh, let's see. Um, Okay, what about if we have a what if I did a space? How many spaces do I have here? I have two spaces there. I'm gonna try one thing and just see just for the fun of it. I'm gonna say I want one space and I'm gonna use that notation. I'm gonna use the notation that tells me one or more so i use a plus sign there uh, let's do a plus and then do a so that didn't work either uh, I will just take another minute of your time. And that's actually right how regex is. I mean, I always get stuck there at these things. And then you start Googling and then you try to find why it's right? not working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like if I did a so a plus is one or more. So I'm telling it that I have one or more blank spaces. So that is correct, right? And then you have the three numbers. In my head, this should work perfectly. Uh, let me just reassign <laughs> it. really should, but what the hell? Okay, let's do this, okay? I'm going to reassign X. For some reason, it may be... Oh, please. Let's just reassign X. Okay, let's reassign X and let's try this. So it would be really awesome if it could work. Okay, so it didn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, Probably I, let's just, let me try this. Okay, I'm going to try this when I'm not like, you know, um, obviously this was not planned, but let me give it a shot later and I will post my solution in, uh, mm. in the audience once I get the SRP, SDRU to work. Okay, so I just have a question, like because you were using the other website to to look things up. What's yeah. the name of it? Because I've never. Oh yeah, so we were gonna play a game there. This is uh, it's a really cool uh, site. It's called Regex uh, Crossword. So it's it's crosswords but using Regex, and here they give you like a snap, like a, it's literally all the quantifiers. So this, for example, um, if you have the star, the 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 asterisk, it tells you like how many of that you should expect to see if it's a plus. Um, so it's it, these are all the quantifiers that we saw. These are the ranges or the character classes that we saw. Where you can specify a range, anchors for the start and the end, and then these are your character classes um, in where you can actually um, specify like just your numbers or white space or whatever. These are also character classes, but it, you can represent them um, in different ways. So okay. Um, so yeah. this, I, I just want to ask one question. Yeah. Oh yeah. Please go ahead. I yeah, this web um, All right, this uh, website rejects crossword is does it is it only for R or is it for Python and other programming languages? Yeah, it's for everything. And actually, let me um, if you are interested in additional programming languages, hold on. I I found a really good resource when I was searching for this, uh, and this is again Jenny Bryan's. Um, uh, yeah, five five four five, and she has like um, cool uh, references there, and they linked to some really really cool uh, reject site, which is like more than just ours. So let me just take you there one second. Um, I believe it's here, character data, and um, okay, that's a video lecture. 
So let's come here. I, I saw some things here which were so cool. Um, KBR. Is it called Rec X? Rec -X? Oh, yeah. I, I think it's like I'm using the one, not the 101, but the recxr.com. And I think it's for every language. Yeah. But, so but this that one is has, exactly. So this one has one second. Let me just do it. Oh, yeah. Read this one. Mm -hmm. So they, there are two of them. So the one which this, I think, is a little bit more limited. It's only JavaScript and PHP. But the other one had everything. And I thought this was like uber cool. It didn't have R, but it has like Python and Golang and .NET and everything. So it's, I know that I've seen like the community talk about this and they speak very highly of it. So even if you don't know these languages, it's a really great way to play around with the project. Mm -hmm. So I have actually provided the, the link to Jenny Bryan's uh, class in my acknowledgements. So you should be able to get that from there, from the, uh, from, uh, from the R markdown. So uh, you should have no problem. So I've provided a reference to all of these at the end. Um, and right from here, and from here, you can get to all of your different, um, you know, whatever sites you. So we let's, yeah, so let's, so we finished up the escape characters and now we were looking at character classes. So let's take a quick look at, let's go back to our, so I think I ended up, um, Uh, okay, yeah, so we have done escape characters and we uh, we are now going to look at um, our character classes. So character classes are really like, they, they are just awesome because it gives you the flexibility to really be very, very, very uh, focused and, and, and uh, really like get to whatever you're looking for. So for this, I have used something uh, from Stringer. It is, um, it's, it's, let, let me just pull that up really quickly. I think I work. So let me just show you what it looks like. Um, it's basically, a, I think it's about a thousand words, just different words. Okay, so obviously it's, it's a really, really great tool to play around with when you're doing uh, string search like this. So what I wanted to do here, and, and, let, and th this is like, it's not hard, but you just need to like know what. Square parentheses, or these parentheses are different from the rounded ones. Remember, I, I told you that those are called clusters and they are like, they're like SQL, it's like a subquery. That is in this, when you have a square parentheses like this, it means that it's one, it, you are, you're basically, you can have any of those options in that, that can work out. It's, um, it can be any one of those characters and you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So here, what I'm doing is I, I'm saying that the pattern I want, it has square parentheses and I say that it has a, a lowercase y there, but, at the, but on the outside, I am saying that I want it to, uh, I have a carrot there. So what do you think that that represents? Is that a negation or is that the start of a sentence? Because we've seen both so far. Okay, let me run this and let's see what we get. Okay, so you see that out of all of these characters, let's look all the way down to the place where we have Y. Okay, so when you, when you look at Y, you see that you have yes, yesterday, year, yet, you, and young. So it's pulled up all of the ones that start with the Y. Okay, so let me, let, let's say that I say Y and I have X. Okay, so I've changed this to have these two. So now, now, now take a look at the results. It's either, it starts with either a Y or an X and I'm not able to see all the results here. So I'm gonna put it in my console again. So you can see it. See, and I'm gonna reduce the size of it. And I'm gonna run this now. Okay, so here earlier we had just the Y and I've now added a Y and an X. And oh, oh, I but think it's, it's uh, no, I think in, 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 in words, there's probably no X starting, like, there's no word starting with an X. Ah, that right. could be okay. the reason, you're right. Okay, so that's correct. So let's go to thank you. <laughs> it's like, uh, have I actually messed up again? Okay, you're right. Thank you, whoever that was. God bless. Yeah, so there was no X, you're right, but notice how it's given you both Y. And it's given you X. Unfortunately, right, I'm not letting me scroll all the way down. 
but you had you seen that you would have uh, realized that you actually have both sets there. So let's take a look. Okay. Uh, let's go back to this. And uh, let's say that you just want to see W. So now you have all of these, but um, let's try one more. So what this is doing is, and you can't see the results, so that kind of blows, but it's actually giving you all the letters that start with U mm. or W. And that's what something like this does. It chooses any one of those. Like it, it, it looks at all of those. It's not exclusive to one or the other. And it's really hard to see because of the fact, okay, oh good, okay, here you go. So when you put it in square parentheses like this, you, this is called a low, priority or it's it's something where it's not taking both of these it's looking for one or the other or the other and whatever you put before and after will basically further feed into that search so it's looking for all those that have a u as a starting or it's looking for all those that have a w as a starting so mind you that this is not going to give you u w so that's one thing to remember if you had a word in there which had u w this search would not do that for you. And if you do want that, you would have to put it in the, in the, um, the, the curve parentheses. So that's, that's what you need to remember here, that this is not gonna give you, it's called a low precedence operator or a low priority operator or something like that. And it's, it's gonna look for it like as a one-off thing. Any questions here um, before we move on? Let's also- Can you see. quickly repeat, like if I was looking for, I mean, probably there's no you, W, like like the the consequence like the sequence is probably not given in the word list. But if yeah. I was looking for like the, the sequence of U W, how would I do that? Well, okay. So then let's take a look at that. We're kind of we would be jumping a little forward, but let's. Uh, again, sorry, no, no, no. We can wait. No, no, we no. Can wait with that's, that. that's totally okay because I I it took me a while to figure out what was the difference between the two, but um. Okay, let's say we want to find all those which have th. Okay, so like anything that's all of these words that have th. If I had to do it, so you can see this, right? You have about, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So there are 19 letters that have th, okay? So if I did this, where I say, um, delete, 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 page as a lowercase, which it is, and I fill it up, you're gonna get like a whole bunch of things, hair and hand, because why? It's looking for all those that start with the T and the T's are there. It's just ordered, uh, I think, alphabetically. And so that's where you're seeing the H's first. But if I wanted a situation where I wanted to get everything that starts with a TH, then I would change that to this, right? And then I would hit that. And then I would get, so what it has done is that this is, when you put it in the, in the rounded parentheses, it's like, like I said, it's a subquery. So the subquery so, stores the results of that search and then you can do whatever else you want. So it's really kind of cool because you already have like, like a localized environment with only the search results. And without using any deep prior verbs or feeding anything forward or whatever, you're still managing within that one like command, like to keep it. Is that the person who had the question? Is that like kind of clear enough? Yeah, that was me. Perfect, crystal clear. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and I didn't get it either. So like for I for the longest time, I was using them interchangeably because I thought they were interchangeable, and obviously they are not. Okay, so let's take a. Um, uh, let's take a look at the next example. And I just want you to look at how things are represented here. Okay. Uh, okay, actually, let's do one more thing. Okay, so in this example, let me just show you one more thing before we move on. Look at the position of the of this. If I move that inside, if I actually move the carrot inside, right, what do you think is going to happen? What is the difference between having the carrot on the outside before that uh, um, the square parentheses and what is the difference in having it right inside next to the character? 
I think having it in the out, or like on the outside makes it like indicate that it should start with Y or X and having it in the inside is probably the negator. Yes, that is exactly correct. That is exactly right. So you see how here, it's basically now you have a ginormous list because it's pulled up everyone who's not um, a Y, correct? So that's gonna be everything else. And it's obviously the X would fit into that as well. So you're, you're definitely going to get the X. But I think had you not had the X here, you would still get the same result because it's still not Y. And if you had, or if you could actually do, I, I don't know if there's a way to do like a count. Maybe there should be a way to do a count. Oops. But it would probably give you exactly the same result. That's, that's what I'm thinking. I wonder if we can do a count chart. I don't know, we can try count of I don't know if you can do that. Um, yeah, I think it returns a character vector, so I feel like you can do it. Uh, okay, so you can't of object. Okay, so it's actually returning some kind of widget or something. Yeah, whatever. So we would, um, um, you could probably do it in a str detect or like a, you could use a, a, a deep fire verb and then uh, move it into like a filter class, like so you would filter that out into that and then you could do a select uh, or a count, count chart of that. But I bet that that's, um, that's going on in the background um, right now. I, we could try it with deep fire and let's try and do that once we finish up with this and we finish the, I really, really want to try, uh, have you guys take a look at the, uh, these puzzles. They are, they are just so fun. We'll get back to this if we have time. Um, so then let me quickly move on to the next one. Uh, take a look at this and, and just guess what you think would be going on here. Notice the characters on the inside. You have square parentheses, you have ED, and then you have a dollar here. You can just say in words what you think might be going on, even if you can't run the example. So I'm not, like, I, I, I can go ahead and guess if no yeah. one else wants. And it's really yeah. guessing because it's not knowing. So we will have ED at the end of the word. So it's like um, headed or whatever, yeah. or walked or something like that. But we won't have an extra E before ED. But that we doesn't really that. make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that doesn't really exactly. make sense. OK. OK. That's, you're exactly right. So I'm not going to even run it in this because I, I know it's just going to hang. So let's actually pull it here and then it, it just goes a whole lot faster. So it's, this is kind of hard to see because you don't know all the other words here. So what I did is I just took a simple example. So one was read and the other one was read. And if, uh, I guess it was Cosima who answered, but if what you said was correct, then what would you expect to see here? We will probably only see red, not read. That's that's correct. You would wait. No, no, no. It's it's correct because but somewhat red is not in there because like read is not highlighted. Ah oh, no, but wait. Uh, hold on. That's weird. It should be only populating that because you have that as a negation. Oh, maybe it has not. I think it's because it's match false. So it only shows the not matched part, which is read. Oh, yes, you're right. Okay, well, okay, whoever, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's correct. So I was playing around with the uh, true and false, and that's correct. So if you say that you wanted to pull up only those that match, then you say the truth. So that is correct. And if you pull up those which didn't match, that, thank you. <laughs> okay, so that's right. Uh, Obviously, we want to see the ones that match. And so uh, red is the one that did match. And why? Because you don't want to get anything that has um, an E before the ED. And so that's why you're negating it here with this. And you and, and then you get um, an ED here. And if you want to try a few more examples here, I'll, I'll obviously I'll be sharing this one with you when you can. OK, so let's take a look at the last one. And then we can move on to the quantifiers. And those are really a lot of fun. So. Um, and this is kind of like really interesting because it's combining a bunch of different things here, okay? So notice that you have the carrot before. So that means you're looking at the start of the sentence, yeah? 
And then you have the square brackets, which means that it could be one or the other or the other or the other, you know, so it, it's, it's not, it doesn't have to be that's the entire string in its entirety. It can be A or E or O or I, but you're saying that you, you're negating it. So you're saying that you don't want it to be any one of the vowels, A, E, I, O, U, and you have a Y there for whatever reason. But then you have these, this thing here, which has a flower bracket and then it has a number there. So what does that mean? So that is that corresponds to this, that it says that you want it to match exactly three times, okay? So you're saying that this string has to appear at the top, at the beginning of your sentence. It cannot be any of the vowels or Y, a E I O U, which is I'm gonna take off one Y and I'm gonna remove this just so that it's easier to just say vowels and not have to think about one and what A E I O U. Okay, so you're saying that this has to this is the sequence you're expecting at the beginning of your of your words. It at the beginning you don't want it to be um, any one of the vowels, but whatever it is which is not the vowels you want it to match exactly. N times, which means that whatever that character is, it has to repeat at least uh, exactly three times. Excuse me. Hey, Pavitra, Matches. sorry, the, there's a question in the chat. Ah, uh, yes. Uh -huh. Someone is asking why repeat O? Why repeat O? From sorry, Robert. Uh, Robert, which, which, which question was, oh, this one matches at least zero. Is this what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. You the o and you deleted the Y as well. Okay, no. He says it's all right, I guess. Oh, he, okay, okay, got it. Um, okay, so uh, so now you get it, right? This is the, the, the character, the first character tells you that it's, it's the start of the sentence, that it's your, um, it's your anchor. It's the anchor character at the beginning of your sentence. It's, it's got square parentheses, which means it can be any one of these. And you don't want any one of them. That's why you have this character. So you don't want any vowel at the start of your sentence. But whatever it is, the non-vowels that is there, you want that to repeat three times. And I want to see all of those that match the criteria. Okay. So hopefully this is not like an insane um, number. So, oh, okay. So that is interesting. Matches at least. Okay. So this is not a repeat, you guys. And I'm sorry if I said that, uh, if I said it in a way that made you think that, because I was thinking that. It has to match the criteria that it's um, at the beginning of the sentence, it's not a vowel, and it has to match that three times, but the character itself doesn't have to match three times. So my apologies if I made you think that because I was thinking the same. So, but you see what it has pulled up here. You have the, the consonants here, and you have three of them, right? And it, these are all the matches, and you will not see any vowels here that show up. Okay, so um, any questions here or any doubts? So we could try this with a few other, um, let's go back to, let me do one thing. If we now added the Y to the, to the query, it would remove fly and dry, right? Yeah, okay, that's, yeah, that's a really good point. So here I've given you the legend here of all the different uh, things that you can use as your in that parenthesis thing. Sorry, and can you repeat what you just said? We can try it. No, because like there's dry and fly in it and you had the Y within the squared brackets before. And I was just wondering if we included oh. now the Y to A E O I U. No, the down is like, yeah, exactly. In in, in 221. In 221, you want to copy that here? No, 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 no. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry if it, if it's confusing now. Um like what I mean is in 221, you had yeah. A, E, O, I, U, yeah. and Y. Yeah. You also had the Y, the consonant. And I'm just wondering if we edit Y oh. now, you're right. Like you're we right. would remove yeah. dry and fly from the list below. That's you're right. That's that's absolutely true. Okay, so let's try that. And oh, cool. Yes. Yeah. So it does do that. And Let's see. So this has to match exactly twice. Exactly three, two or more. So let's try one more thing. Let's see it's three or more, right? I wonder what that would give us. If um, I guess it would have to meet the continue to meet the criteria. So this would probably be a much smaller list. 
uh, it would be, if so it's three or more, right? So whatever actually met the requirement that it could be three or more, you would find it. But obviously all those which are three are still at three. So you would get this. So let's run this here and see if we get a slightly larger number. So we don't, because I, because look at what's happening. You have vowels showing up after, right? So um, that's why they don't need that criteria for three or more. It's exactly three because the fourth one in all of these cases is a vowel. Right, so let's say that we take A out of that, for example, and we run this. Um, we get more, but what we will get is that we'll be able to see straight and strategy at this point. So let me just do that. You're gonna get a lot more though, because you'll get the ones which were originally suppressed by that. Um, and now you can't see that because of the fact that it's all the way out there. So, um, Okay, and uh, let's see. I wonder if you did, uh, so obviously it's case sensitive, so let's try with the uppercase C. Okay, so now all the C's are gone and now it matches. I wonder if there was anything where Mm -hmm. On the left side, you can see address that was not there before. Oh, yeah. So, but why is it? The, oh, but see how it has, it's actually captured ADDR because we looked for three and more. And this, in this particular word, it turned out that the fourth one was not a vowel. So that's why it got address there. Right? Do you see that? Like that's the result of this. Uh, is there anything you want to try with this? Let me see. Um, let's do what we did there then. Okay. So what I was going to say is that here, see how address is like four characters which matched. And we said we wanted to be three and more. And because it's not a vowel, it, it matched here. Okay. Okay, let's see if there's anything else we can try to do. Two, three, or four. So it has to be in that range. Okay, I'm not gonna zero or one. Zero or one. Okay, so let's see if we, let's use a quantifier here, but I'm not gonna use the parentheses. I'm gonna say, that. I'm going to say a question mark. So what does a question mark mean? That it has to be zero or a one. Okay, so I'm curious to see what that would return. So you, it has to be either zero or one. So that's interesting, right? Like if it's zero, I wonder what. So it can either not match and you get nothing or it, or it is a one. I mean, I see that it's a given back like one character, but what would a zero be? Anyway, I don't know. What that is. Probably something like with a blank space or something. Or just a blank, you think? Is mm -hmm. this a blank? Do you think this might no. be? No, I, I, I don't think because like in spring are words, there are only words in there. But let's yeah. say we had an like an empty, had, oh. an mm -hmm. empty cell, cell somewhere, we would yeah. also get that one. I think you're right. That makes sense. Yeah. And you wouldn't see it here because this is a cleaned up uh, data set, but I think that's that's true if you want to rethink the plan. Yeah, that's really that's a really good point. Yeah. Um, okay, so does this kind of make sense? Okay, so here's something else we could try. Okay. Uh let's take this out and let's instead of using a character class, let's use um our good old friend here, which is the which is this. And here I'm gonna say that. I want at the beginning of my word, I want everything that is, um, that starts with C-H-R and so here I think if you specify a number, I have a feeling that that has to match because you're, you're looking at all three together. In that case, if you did, um, say a plus, where it's a, where a plus means it has to be one or more. 
let's see what happens. You would get the ones which started with the THR, right? But let's say that you made this uh, an asterisk. So here, Oh, you know what? Zero almost. So it matched all the zeros. <laughs> okay, so it didn't match any one of this, but it says zero or more. So that's why you got back the entire data set. So did that answer your question? I was, it's, I guess it's the, both the space and the fact that it didn't match any, anything in the data set. Yeah, that absolutely right? that, makes sense. Yeah, does, does that make sense to you? Yep. Okay, cool. Let's try. I don't know. Hopefully, this won't take too long to populate. But yeah, it basically highlighted the area right before, right? Okay, so that's good to know. And actually, I I was I was also a little bit confused, like Robert, like what is that thing with zero? So it gives you everything. So it's like uh, it's like if nothing matches, you get back the entire data set. I guess there is some value to that at some point. I'm sure. But okay, well, interesting. Good to know. Um, okay, so I think we've also covered a little bit of the quantifiers because we were doing that here. So the star, um, I mean, the asterisk is just like zero, matches at least zero times. That's really kind of interesting, but just based on what I saw now, um, that's kind of interesting. It's, I guess it's like a, it's like a, what is that called? Um, a cross join, isn't that what we use in SQL? When we do a cross join, we at least get back one row, right? Like even if it doesn't match. Is that is does anyone here know SQL well enough to either say what I'm either validate what I'm saying or say it's complete nonsense, what I just said? I think I'm, a cross product. I'm not an expert in SQL, but I think it's right, at least from my understanding. So it gives you that, right? It does a cross join even if it uh, doesn't actually match the whatever your join clauses is, is what I think. That's what it was. But okay. Anyway, so plus is at least once. And the question mark is utmost once, right? So yeah, I don't think we tested the utmost, but I'm sure there will be a time when we'll use that. Okay. So then let's move on. Where are we right now? Okay, so this is kind of an interesting example here. Um, um, so I want to call your attention to this here. I have created a character vector that has, you know, just weird like strings of character underscore and then some phone numbers and whatever, whatever. And notice here when I uh, I've said str underscore view and just take a look at this. It's it's a pretty crazy wildcard sequence. Look at it and 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 just think about what you think it might return. It's actually quite cool. The one thing I will say though is I don't think I told you guys what a dot is. I mean, like just one a dot. It's any character. So you can see that here in the range. Sorry. Um, you can see here in the range, uh, the dot says any character except for a new line. So I just want to say that. And then remember what the star is. It's zero or more. So that's what this is. Okay. And, oh, sorry. Can, um, and then, of course, you know what the carrot and the dollar are. So think about it and think about what you think it might return. It's like if no one has a clue, it's again me guessing. Uh, but no, Simi, you wanted to say something? I did. <laughs> Excellent. Go ahead. No, not really. <laughs> No, Come no, you want it? Ah, uh, sorry. You okay. can't. You you can't be wrong with this. You can't be more wrong than I was. I've I already made like four huge boo boos on this talk. So you're always gonna look better than me with whatever you guess. Okay, I'll give you a clue. So the dot will return. It's any character, okay? And the star is at zero or one. So my guess that it it, it, it returns everything is what I say. Okay, so let's try it. And sure enough, and why? It's because we are saying that at the beginning, this is your beginning, this is your end, right? And then you're saying that match any character. So any character, unless it's a, 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 a new line, and none of these have new lines in them, embedded in the string, 
And we are saying that it has to repeat either zero or more times, which you know um, now we know why they have it as zero or more. It's just a catch-all for everything. So you also get it, get back, you know, whatever it is that the space before. So when you say this, you get back your entire data set. And this, of course, we can totally play around with. So I can say, I can come in here and I can put it in um, square parentheses and I say that I want uh, B or K, close the square parentheses. And so notice what I'm saying here. I'm saying at the beginning, I want it to be either D or K or H for that matter. And I'm saying that it can be repeated um, zero or more times. And then I have the end of the string. Okay, so let's try that. Okay. Um, so that's did I get back? Smaller. So I wonder how the oh how did the numbers come? Is it because of the D? No, it can't be because of the D. Is it because we are matching? How did the numbers show up though? Uh, I wonder how we have to specify the numbers. Like, if, if we don't go for any character, we probably have to specify numbers specifically. Like by so, say, with the with the square brackets and then zero to nine or something. Well, what if I escape this though? Would that make a difference? Yeah, it does. That gives us back the number. But, oh, you know what? It just returned the entire data set, but it didn't highlight anything. So I wonder if it just means that, um, wait, does it mean that nothing actually matched? Or does it mean that we got back everything? Actually, let me, let me do one thing. I'll put this in the console. Sometimes this is so confusing to me. Okay. Um, here. So, hmm. so we got back of the asterisk maybe. What's that? Could it be because of the asterisk? Because the asterisk, asterisk is returning everything, including the numbers. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, we have genius in this room. <laughs> well, but hold on. So plus is one or more. Mm -hmm. What happens if you add like another squared brackets, including zero to nine, like like just after the this, yeah, like just oh, there. And then you open up the square brackets zero to nine and then close it. Just like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Not sure if it's working though. Well, well it let's take out that plus thingy. I wonder if that's kind of messing us up. Um uh, you know, I bet I know what's going on. I think it's because we have specified the beginning of the sentence. So let's do this and let's take out the carrot. And I think it's looking specifically for that and we haven't. Now it's looking for that at the end of the sentence. So, <laughs> so. That's kind of real life when it comes to regex, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not examples work. No, but, but what must work is like if you remove DKH in the squared brackets, mm -hmm. we will for sure get numbers back. But here's a problem, you guys. I think what it's looking for is either DK or H and, and mm -hmm. some number after that. And so that's why it's not working. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. because, that makes sense. Right? So yeah. for example, if let's say I had, um, let's change our string. I think that's probably why, because it's looking for that in sequence that it's one of those or mm -hmm. it's one of the other ones. So if, for example, if I did this, um, okay. And I did, um, let's say, um, 
And here I say that I want my str view. And now I'm going to add, um, okay, so first assign this. Okay. And here I'm going to say that it can be B, K, or H. And then I could have a space where I'll say that open square bracket and put a space, close the square bracket, and I say it's a star because it can be space or no space, and then I say I get numbers. Okay, all right, you guys, let's. Okay. Yeah, I think I have a problem again. Let's, um, I think I know the problem. It's looking for each character specifically. I am gonna get this son of a gun now. Okay. Uh, D, K, or H again. And then D, K, or H again, because it's accounting for each character specifically. Mm. Oh, so two spaces? No, I said it. Shouldn't it be L, like D, K, L instead of D, K, H? Oh, is that L or is that a, oh no I think you're right is that a one actually oh I think it's a one no I you're think right. it's an L it's an L yep because we have it a... yes you're right that's okay that's correct that's D K L okay well it would be nice if one example works yes we did it you guys <laughs> we did it so now because I actually had some success I'm gonna try one more thing. I'm going to say in parentheses, I'm going to say three to see if I get back all three numbers. Thank you, guys. I'm a little bit emboldened by my, okay, well, there you go. So we actually encoded for the space. We said it could be anywhere from zero to whatever, and it's numbers. And then this tells us that we want three occurrences. Of, I mean, not three repeats, but it's three occurrences. And that would work even if it was not like the same number, right? Okay, cool, thanks guys. Well, at least um, I didn't end up looking like an absolute idiot. <laughs> okay. I think it's totally it's normal like... when it comes to regex. I mean, that it's always like that. And at yeah. least for me, but I'm, I'm absolutely not an expert. It's always Googling. It's always Googling, yeah, for sure. And I think those re the resources were like, I think they're, they're gonna be something I probably go back to a lot because they had a lot of ways to like test yourself. Okay, so let's, I think we have kind of already done so much of this. Um, hmm. Okay, so let's think about why they have the escape character here for the numbers and why they could not just use it like we did here, just zero to nine. You know what I mean? Like, um, why would they need to use the escape? Now that I'm thinking about how this works, I'm wondering why. Uh, well, actually, you see how the, oh, oh, okay, okay. I think um, the person that brought up the fact that the parentheses need an escape was right. So this is for the parentheses. So whoever said that earlier for that other thing, I think you're right. That's exactly why we have this. Because I thought the escape was for the digits, but I this is what the other the, that person pointed out that you may need to escape it and you do. That's that's why this is there. So let's just run this and see what you get. So you see it highlighted the the parentheses. So that is correct. It's it the, that meta character needs to be escaped as well. And obviously it's double backslash because of the fact that it's um, it's R and it's regex when the system. Okay, so I think that kind of made sense. And the reason that we caught both of them, even though this had the space, is why? Because we had one of the clauses says that we can have um, black, um, blank spaces in there and we have a star, so zero or more. So it'll catch those that have the space and it'll catch those that don't have the space as well, as long as we meet the other criteria. So very nice. We just found out that we need the backslash, backslash for um, parentheses as well, both opening and closing. Cool. Any questions or anything you want to try here? I, well, I certainly didn't know that, so that's, that should be good to know. Uh, okay, uh, let's take a look here. So the only difference between that and this was this was a star, which means that it's it could be or not be. And then if you have a plus, it is just it's either one or more. So 
I think we probably won't fit the the four five six here in this case because that did not have a space. So this is expecting a space of uh, one or more, right? So I think you'll get only one result. Yeah. So the one that had a space or more, you get back that. Yeah, I think they're kind of making some sense, and we do see that. So, okay, cool. Uh, what is the last one? So the last one is zero or one. And I think the string is different here. So here we have one where there is no space and we have one where there's multiple spaces. I, it seems like it might be more than one. So again, let's see what happens here. Uh, okay, so this is going to be one of those which they go away. I will drop it in console. I'll sign the string and then they will Okay, so it gave back um, that's zero or one. So, okay, so there is no space here. So we got back to that and then this is um, more than one, right? And this doesn't meet the criteria because uh, it does not have the parentheses, which is required because it's a, a fixed state character there. Uh, so I think I'm clear about that. I don't know how you guys feel, but um, Okay, this is the last example for this, for the font part. Um, here, I've just used a different notation here. So instead of using the, the digits, I've used a backslash D, and then I've um, just said four. So the important thing to remember here that four is not, it doesn't have to be a repeating sequence of the, it has, doesn't have to be the same entity. It just has to be the same, type that matches these criteria because I actually got confused thinking it has to be the same. So it has to be four digits, two digits, two digits, and you have the intervening um, hyphen. So I'm guessing it gives us only one, which is this, yeah. So that makes sense. Cool, so that was simple. Character clusters, we already saw, this is the one where we use um, the rounded parentheses like the subquery. And here, all that this is doing is um, it's, um, okay, so uh, this is actually quite nice. We've gone back to the end on data set here. And I've used dplyr here because else you get a really ginormous list and it takes so long. So I put, I used a dplyr verb here. I tried to keep uh, dplyr out of this so we could just focus on the regex. But here, what it does is it goes to the email column. And uh, this is kind of cool. It's looking for all of those which have the at sign. And mind you, you have a dot here. So dot means what? It's any character except the new line. And then you have a star, so zero or more. So it will, it's, it's like say John at um, anything, and it could be a zero to whatever. But after that, you have a backslash backslash dot, which means that you're using it as a literal dot there, right? You're not using it as a dot for regex, which is what it is here. Since you're backslash backslash here, that means you are using it as a literal string. So which means you're saying that you actually want a dot. So basically what this says is the John part before the at you discard, it's going to look at it from the at. And let's say it's John at Wharton.edu or something like that. So you discard the John, you have the at, and the Wharton will essentially be everything here, correct? It's uh, all the characters, which zero to infinity. And then you have the dot. This would capture the dot because it's a literal. You have escaped, escaped dot. So you have the dot and edu. Um, and the reason that this is in parentheses is because it is, um, you're creating, uh, you, you want to get that class of string that matches this. And you can also say either edu or you can say uh, dot star net. Now, because it is not the square parentheses, it's not the square bracket, it will take the entire string. So what you get is at Wharton, just for one example, it could be anything, at Wharton.edu, or you can get at Wharton.net, because this is an or in regex, we, we saw that. And this is not a square bracket, it's a rounded one. So it will give you everyone who has a .edu or a .net, whatever matches uh, this criteria here, which is it has to have an at and all that. So let's see what we get. So notice that we get 
everyone who has an act and notice how some of them have a lot more characters before it gets to the .edu and the .net. So that was, this person has mail or San Marcos, whatever, this person has just Enron and, and, and it hits .net. But it doesn't matter because you've used a dot to say any character except a new line, right? That's what this did. And you're saying star, which means that it's zero or more. So it could have had nothing, which won't be a legitimate email address, but that's basically what it is. So I got you back everything that I think we can't see that. Oh yeah, you do see some dot .edu's here. You have the Vanderbilt. So you got all of that from there and then it matched the dot .edu there, right? So this is, this is kind of cool because it's unlike that other one, which we've seen so far. It's this or this or this or this, like it's a or, and this is the, this has, this is a high priority or a high precedence operator uh, when you put it in this. So it will it'll take the entire string and search for it. So that's kind of neat when you want to look for the, for it in its entirety and not just the, one or the other. <clears throat> so that's what that is doing there. Um, I did play around with this a little bit. Um, I wanted to, um, I'm not sure if this is a great idea, but uh, I kind of wanted to do that, the crossword with you. So um, this, I was just trying, I'll just show you the results. Um, I got some that I wanted and I got some that didn't. So I'm not sure if it worked, but I think you kind of might get an idea of what I was trying to do here. So I want everything with the at, and then I have a dot, uh, uh, asterisk, which means I want everything after that. Then I'm saying, I want to get everything that has an email address, but that email address has to be pre pre uh, uh, preceded by a ns.net. So I have made this a requirement and then I have escaped, escaped this, and then I said .net. So let me show you what. It gave me back what I wanted, but it also gave me something here which means that I have more done right? Uh, okay, one, um, okay, so it seems to have returned the results here. Okay, yeah, so this is what I wanted. I wanted everyone who had an email address starting, I mean, with the ad, and I wanted it to have ns.net, okay? And I tried it with ns.net or ns.edu, like I didn't know what it was. So I did get back those that have at ns.net, but I also got back this. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so I'm not sure if it worked. It could be complete nonsense. Uh, this did work. So this is kind of interesting, right? Because it picked up midplanes.net, right? So that's cool because it got like a part of it that was covered by the dot and the star. And then this clearly uh, did not work. Uh, but I don't know why. So I'm not sure. I also seem to have gotten, so this also seems to have worked because this has a net in dot thing. This Harvey Vax, I have no idea how this dude showed up here. Like hlvax at aol.com, like, I mean, go figure. I don't know. It's not even like net, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there must be something, something messed up, but it should not have come in at all. Anyway, so I how just- I, I might have an idea. Probably it's because it's I'm not sure how to like like just looking at it now. It might yeah. be that the Harvey is in the same line as the Sukuda. So it's it's basically the same entry. There are just two email addresses. I'm not sure if that's right, but oh, it's really? because it oh. says Tibble six times one and it's six rows. So like for whatever reason, there are two email addresses in one line which doesn't really make sense from like constructing the data set, but there must be a reason behind that. That's okay. I see. So I wonder if what you're saying makes sense because I think you notice how the string, I think you're right, because see how the string we got everything up till at. So I wonder if all of these guys came because they all are before the at symbol. I think they're right. Maybe if all of these are before the act and they showed up and then here it fulfills the criteria. So they came and here, so I don't know how this guy showed up. 
you know what I mean? Like if that was also valid, which I think you are right, and that's probably how this guy and this guy sneak in. I wonder how this this guy came. Like, not sure. Not sure how the R R C L T R E C mind spring guy came. You know what I mean? Like, is there anything that was a catch all that? Yeah, I guess like the RCLREC mindspring.com guy is in because we do have the RNDYHBNR at midplanes.net. And the midplanes.net shows up because there's this sequential NS. Then NS there's, yeah, and it's in the same line. Like it's a really weird constructed data set, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right. So okay, so it seems to have worked, but maybe not exactly the way you wanted it to work, <laughs> or the way I wanted it to work. But yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, well, so there you go. I actually learned with you guys as I mm -hmm. thought. So that's why it was uh, just such a big mess. But sometimes it kind of helps, uh, you know, because then you actually know the thought process, and then you can like make your own. Uh, you know, uh, you can kind of jump to your own whatever. So hopefully it was helpful in some sense. I don't know if we have time. I think we don't have time for the crossword puzzle, but I'm gonna drop it here because I want. I so want you to take a look at it. it. It was so much of fun, and you will get the entire legend. Oops, sorry. You will get the entire legend. Let me just share for one more minute. If you go to that website, uh, that regex thing, all you have to do is click on help, right? And then it pulls up the legend there, and then we you can just work your way through this. So. This is a great way for you to try out your the R uh, character here, and then your pluses, which is your quantifier, mm -hmm. the square bracket, and all of that good stuff. So um, enjoy and uh, you know play around with it. I I definitely the the beginner ones are definitely the intermediate. I haven't really ventured, but they have like a whole bunch of things here. So if you if you come here and if you look at this, they um, they have like the experience intermediate. So yeah. So it, it's like, you, you can just totally go to town with this, but um, sorry, we couldn't get to that, but um, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And um, let's all reject ourselves like crazy now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that, Robert. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor. Hey, that was very guys. interesting. And if, these, wow. if, you, if you're available, maybe we could have a part two. But yeah. to me, the yeah. problem is I don't know I know anything more for a part two. So yeah, I am available, but I'm just not sure I can contribute much. <laughs> <laughs> it can also be in a couple of years. I, I mean, honestly, I learned so much. And I think like showing the not the toy code. data and show yeah. like what can go mm. wrong helps yeah. you to learn much more than showing like perfectly yeah. working examples. Because like, as you said, so true. I have seen the best speakers. In fact, I just attended a talk by the lady who wrote the Bayes Rules with uh, Mine and uh, Miles. She gave a talk and she completely put herself out there. She didn't care that she didn't look, you know, perfect. And she's the co-author of the book. And I learned oh, nice. more, <laughs> more on that talk than I had ever, like, in any, you know, well-constructed, like, perfectly, you know, everything works. So mm. yeah, I do think there's something to be said for that. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much, you guys. And uh, good luck with the Regex. Thank you so much. And yeah. thank you so much for showing us and like really for walking us through the, the thought processes because that's like mm. kind of what we're gonna do yeah. once we're gonna be alone in front of our yeah. Regex problems, being there and looking for things. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that Jenny Bryan's site is so helpful because of that video, especially actually, you know what? Let me just post that video here. There is there is a guy there who is now her, he was her TA, but he actually is the one that's running the course now. And he is so good. Like I literally picked up like a ton just looking at his videos and he has an entire uh, channel. So let me drop that in chat. Uh, he's a very skilled teacher. So yeah, that's that's the stat 504, which uh, Jenny, uh, 505, which Jenny Bryan started and he's taken over now, so. Okay, enjoy okay. you guys and have a great rest of your weekend thank, thank you. you and just so before, you, before go you go i just wanted to also um provide a link there's a guy who also talks about using rejects but he uses it in python so for any of you guys who use python there's the link there so he takes us step by step and it looks as though the 
the coding in Python and R are the same. So that should be interesting to look at. But I think in the the link, oh, nice. like the, the GitHub, we can provide all the, the links there. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. Uh, and Kasima, I will. So I have to figure out the part with this STR view, but I'll get that and then I'll I'll forward the RMB to you. So uh, I'll do that soon. Excellent, excellent. And we will publish the the recording for anyone who wants to go to, through the thought processes again on YouTube. So we will keep you posted on that. So we'll put that up on LinkedIn and Twitter and on the meetup page as well. So you will get that as well. Amazing. Thank you, Thank you so Thanks. much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you so much for Pavitra for, for walking us through. That Thank was excellent. Um, and see you at one of the next meetings around. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, you guys have a great weekend. Bye-bye.